from New York City, America's accountant, Dan Geltrude. Dan, thank you so much for joining me. So, Dan, uh, I'll ask you, what do you think about these Senate Democrats ignoring the question? Uh, did they, do they not know how much gas costs or they just didn't want to answer it? I'm not surprised at all, Steph. Look, they certainly do know how much gas prices are in their state because their constituents have to be, you know, calling and contacting those offices saying, hey, what are you going to do about these prices at the pump? Listen, when you're talking about fuel costs rising the way they have, everyone feels it across the board. And it, it puts a lot of economic hurt on people because, as we always go back to, everything that we use, every service goes from point A to point B. How? Let's say by truck. Trucks use diesel fuel. The price of diesel fuel has gone through the roof. So everyone is feeling this inflation-driven pain that's caused by poor energy uh, policies. And there's really no one to blame except what's, what the people that are in Washington, D.C. right now. What did you think of this Seattle Times article where the author saying high gas prices is just what we needed? I mean, that is so out of touch from reality and how the regular American is feeling, uh, especially when they go to fill up their gas tanks. I mean, that, to me, when I read an, a, a title like this uh, in an article, I, I think that the author probably works from home, doesn't drive very much. Uh, probably is doing well, uh, you know, significantly well salary wise. So they just don't really feel that impacted by it or they're just dishonest and don't care. Well, the title worked, right, because it got you to read it. It got me to read it and to say, hey, where is this coming from? Could this even be real? So the point that the author of this article is making is to say, well, if we have high fuel costs, people are going to do less driving therefore less driving and that means a cleaner globe you know we're, we're going to be doing something about climate change look uh, the climate change is there we've always had climate change since the beginning of time however many ice ages we've had and so on and so forth so the question becomes is it really fossil fuels that that are causing this and i think the jury is out on that but even if that were the case that we could really narrow it down definitively factually to say it is fossil fuels okay prices go up for for gas at the pump and people in the united states have stopped driving and stop using fossil fuels and we become economically disadvantaged compared to other countries around the globe that are saying, you know what, we don't care, like China, India, they're just going to continue to be huge polluters. We don't have a separate world just for us. So either we're all in or the United States really suffers economically. Yeah, and this author is just kind of repeating some of the uh, leftist talking points, if you will, from folks like Senator Elizabeth Warren and Senator Bernie Sanders and even Biden himself. I mean, he was talking about attacking the uh, fossil fuels and oil industry uh, throughout his campaign, even during the debates. And so, um, you know, they can talk about renewable energy and we're fine with that. and We want to go that direction, but we need to make sure that there is an appropriate transition where people aren't left in a situation where they can't afford gas to get to work that they can't afford the groceries and everything else. Well, pardon the pun here, but this is not a light switch. We don't just simply uh, automatically say, you know what, these fossil fuels could be damaging to our planet. So we're just going to stop that and go to solar, go to wind, go to electric, go to these all alternative methods. It just doesn't work that way. I think it's fine to say, listen, over the next three dec decades, four decades, whatever the case is, there is a point where we want to be using cleaner fuels. Fine. But to say that we're going to do that today really jeopardizes our country. And it's not just the economy. It's, it's, it's our freedom. If we are not energy independent, meaning we have to rely on unfriendly nations in order to get our power, our energy, you know, that becomes a national security issue. So I, I think that we have to be realistic and say for right now, our thirst for fossil fuel is what it is, and we have to go down that path to keep our economy intact.
At the same time, we want to be able to look at the alternatives and see how we can improve things in the years to come. That's the prudent way to approach this. Yeah, and it's just totally absurd when we hear uh, people in charge, like uh, the Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg, who says, oh, just go get an electric vehicle, or, oh, actually, well, you can't afford that. I just heard you can't afford it, so just get on the bus. That's how you'll get around. You know, never mind where you live, and maybe that the public's transportation uh, isn't that reliable or that great in your area. So, uh, yeah, they definitely need to come up with some better solutions because it's not working. Well, Dan, we got to leave it here. We appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Steph. Thank you.